Have you guys ever thought about a solution for prisons getting overcrowded? Well, if you haven't, somebody has and they proposed a solution. And that is what our movie is going to be about today. So let's see how that solution played out in real life, shall we? Our movie starts out with an interview scene where a woman interviews a bunch of inmates about their memories. She asks them where they are, what they did to get there, and to answer those two questions, where they are is in prison, and what they did to get there is pretty much different from one inmate to another. If you're wondering why these inmates don't even remember how they got there or what they did, allow me to enlighten y'all. So, since prisons were getting really overcrowded, the government proposed a solution. And that solution is to keep prisoners inside these cryopods in hypersleep. They would pretty much remain in the pod for most of their sentence, and every few months or years, depending on what the inmate did, they would get woken up and they would be reminded of what they did to relive the moments of their crimes. The government is aware of what happens in hypersleep, and they use the fact that the inmates don't remember what they did as a way of punishment, because every time they wake them up, they make them relive their horrible moments all over again. These reawakening sessions that psychologists have with the inmates is also considered a form of re-education. Re-education in the sense that the inmate is now aware that what they did was wrong and they'll never do it again. One of these psychologists that work in these prisons is David. He's a very smart psychologist and he's worked in the prison for a really, really long time. As we take a deeper look into our protagonist's life, we're introduced to his girlfriend, Viola. David is dating Viola not because he's just some guy who's in his mid-40s and single, no. He's dating her because his wife offed herself after she was diagnosed with depression. So technically speaking, he is single or he is dating Viola and they're doing it. Anyways, moving on. One day, he wakes up in bed and Viola finds a picture of his wife inside one of his books. But before they can have a conversation about it, David gets an emergency call back to his office. Or should I say, back to the prison. And this surprise's name is Andrea Rinaldi, because they're Italian. This Andrea guy is here to replace David for his job. Did David get a memo? Did he receive a notice, an email? No, no he didn't. And the reason why he didn't is because Andrea is a month early to the job and he came early to observe David in his natural habitat so he can do the job perfectly just as David did. His boss and colleague, Dr. Livy, tells him that they had to terminate him because he was too overqualified for the job and nobody did this specific job as long as David did. And the company Hypno didn't really think that putting a person in that position for a long time is good for their mental well-being. His last month on the job, David starts to contemplate what he's gonna do with his life. Viola, his girlfriend, doesn't like the fact that he's gonna move 300 kilometers away from her house and so invites him to stay over. And every day at work, he spends more time with Andrea explaining what the job entails. But one day, as he comes back from his daily jog, he goes to his office and finds Andrea with an inmate that he awoke himself without David's confirmation or schedule. Andrea tells David that the reawakening was an emergency, and as it so happens, they do wake up inmates when there is an emergency inside their pot. But when David looks at the man, the man looks perfectly fine. To make things even weirder, when David goes to the computer to check out this man's file, there was no file, there was no name, there was no nothing. Things start to get pretty intense as well when the man starts talking about David as if he knows who he is. But when they ask him what his name is, he doesn't cooperate. To find out who he really is, David goes to another room to find his personal belongings and find some sort of ID. And he tells Andrea to stay with him and goes down to one of the rooms. But as he was there, an emergency alarm goes off as one of the inmates was leaking oxygen. David manages to fix the oxygen tube just in time before the inmate dies and Andrea and Vali both come to his location hearing the alarm. David instantly blames Andrea for being some kind of inside spy and tells his friend Vali that Andrea did all this to create a diversion to let one of the prisoners escape. But Vali points the gun at David and takes both of them back to the office. When they get there, they're surprised to see Viola there with the inmate and she starts talking all crazy, asking David why he wanted to hurt him. By him, I'm referring to the inmate. As Vali tries to hear what the inmate was mumbling and gets closer to him, the inmate shoots Vali dead. 
He then holds Viola as hostage and orders David to handcuff himself. After David handcuffed himself, the inmate tries to force himself on Viola. And for a moment, Viola somehow embraces the act, but then she gets disgusted by it all of a sudden again, and David somehow miraculously manages to break the handcuff and then stabs the man on the neck. They both fall on the ground and David loses consciousness. When he wakes up though, he hears a woman's voice and it's Dr. Livy, and he wakes up inside the prison and he is the inmate. Apparently, he was arrested for a crime and has been in hypersleep for over 10 years. Dr. Livy tries to remind him of what he did, and she starts to do that by first trying to bring back all his memories, and she starts with the question of how he first met Viola. Apparently, David met Viola as she was the wife of a prisoner inside the prison. And this inmate is the same inmate that shot Vali and tried to force himself on Viola and what David thought was a memory but was actually a hallucination, a dream he was having while in hypersleep. As Dr. Livy makes him remember what exactly happened, David starts to recall everything. He recalls as he started dating Viola, at some point somebody contacted her telling her that her husband who was in prison is actually innocent. Viola then tried to convince David into letting her husband go, but David got too jealous and instead of releasing her husband, he actually killed him. He killed her husband by cutting off his oxygen supply as he was in cryosleep. But little did David know, her husband's oxygen tank was connected to other tanks and other people died in the process as well. This other person that died, her name is Anna Grego. She was just collateral damage who was an inmate inside the prison and was connected to the guy that David wanted to kill. And after Dr. Livy's interview, David requests to be put back to sleep, but Dr. Livy tells him that this is his last session because he is getting released today. His parole is still going to last for another 10 years, but it's a lot better than being in hypersleep. But David starts to reconsider that fact as he meets his parole officer, who is an absolute ass, my god. Now, as David is on parole, the government gives him a house, they get him a job at a hotel, and he's witnessing what it means to be a criminal released on parole. He sees how things are so corrupt and how the government tries to portray the hypersleep pods as something that's revolutionizing and something that re-educates and improves prisoners for the better. When in fact, the side effects are pretty horrible. Most people who undergo hypersleep for long periods of time experience side effects like not being able to tell reality from hallucinations and feeling very anxious and worried all the time for no reason. And this is exactly what David was doing until one day, as he was walking back from work, he sees a poster with Viola's picture on it. As he walks inside the place where the flyer was posted, he sees that it's a bar where Viola works as a pianist. As they lock eyes, David didn't know what to do or say and so he walks out of the bar. But Viola follows him out and tells him to stay away from her and she also talks about how she suffered for 10 years because of him. A couple weeks later, as David was at work, he gets a visitor. His visitor was apparently Vali. And if you're asking yourself, oh wait, I thought that guy died. No, he didn't. That scene was actually just a hallucination that David was seeing in hypersleep. After Vali and David catch up, Vali gives David a gun for self-protection. And David, seeing that he doesn't really have any friends anymore, confides in Vali and tells him that somebody broke into his apartment and left a picture of a fountain. On our next scene, we see David going to that fountain. There, he sees a symbol on a house. When he walks toward it, he sees an old man approaching the house and David recognizes him. And the old man was the husband of Anna, the same Anna that David killed accidentally as he was trying to kill Viola's husband. David manages to get inside the house by telling the old man that he was his wife's colleague. Inside the house, the old man and David start to have a chat and the old man tells David that his wife is innocent and she was a journalist that was looking into the company Hypnos. The old man tells David that the police almost took everything but he saved a few of her investigative files and David takes a few pictures of them. But during his picture taking, the old man recognizes David from one of the old pictures and tells him to get out of the house after realizing David worked for Hypnos in the past. With some of the pictures that David had from the old man's place, he goes to Viola's house. 
They try to look at all the evidence, but they didn't know what to make of it. And Viola comes up with the idea of contacting the man that told her that her husband was innocent 10 years ago. At night, they wait for the man at a parking lot, and the man was somebody who was high up in the Hypnos company. As Viola was talking to him, David sneaks into his back seat and points a gun at him, asking if Viola's husband was innocent. The man explains that Viola's husband was innocent, and that David was also innocent, and that they were both just being silenced by the authorities because they were discovering huge corruption in the company Hypnos. After disarming David, who is not really good with guns as he's just a doctor, the man tells Viola and David never to contact him again and leaves. They go back home, and after they slept together, David had to go to his night shift and left early at night, but before he left, Viola tells him to take her car instead of walking. As he exits the house and walks toward the car, a weird strange man starts pointing at his own head. And David gets inside the car and he weirdly remembers some vague memory and takes off his hat and starts to look for something inside. And surprisingly, David finds a memory card inside his hat. The memory card only had one video inside, and the video was an interview that David conducted illegally after waking Viola's husband without anybody knowing and interviewing him about hypersleep. Viola's husband tells David how hypersleep makes one lose touch with reality, and as they're reawakened after years of hypersleep, the machine that's supposed to keep them calm as they recollect their memories actually does more than just calm down their brain. It opens neural pathways to the subconscious and the person who was reawakened believes anything that you tell them. Meaning you can implant false memories inside of someone's head and make them believe that they did it. As soon as David finished watching the video, he sees a bunch of men dragging Viola inside a van. He follows the van to this artsy fartsy bourgeois party. Oh my god, that rhymes. Anyways, he manages to get inside the party and finds Andrea there. After holding Andrea at gunpoint and asking him a bunch of questions, Andrea confesses to the fact that David was innocent, but they had to silence him somehow as he was getting to the root of the corruption inside Hypnos. And the person behind all the corruption and the company Hypnos was Minister Costa, who's actually now Prime Minister Costa. Costa, who is now the Prime Minister, walks in as David was interrogating Andrea. David then takes Andrea as a hostage and demands that they release Viola right now. And by the way, he demands this after telling the guards to put their guns down. So we get a pretty awesome scene of him screaming, METTI GIU LA PISTOLA! Which is drop the gun in Italian. Prime Minister Costa tells him to leave with Viola if he doesn't shoot anybody. David almost shot the Prime Minister for taking away 10 years of his life, but Viola manages to calm him down and as they were walking out, he starts to hallucinate and Viola turns to his wife and she shoots herself. Then the next thing we see is David waking up again from hypersleep and he's still in prison being interviewed by Dr. Livy. And a very incredible and weird twist happens here as Dr. Livy tells David that he's been in hypersleep for 35 years. And it's not actually said directly, but his crime was actually killing Viola. The movie leaves things open-ended and the audience is supposed to believe that he killed her because he knew the prime minister would put her in hypersleep and he couldn't imagine that for her, so he had to just do what he had to do. He tells Dr. Livy that he has evidence for everything that he's claiming and that it's hidden inside of his cap. But she tells him that he talks about this every time he gets reawakened and that it's just a dream. Also, since he's been in hypersleep for about 35 years, he's now in his 80s and looks really, really old. But the weird thing is, Dr. Livy still looks the same. And she tells David that his sentence is gonna end in one year and he'll finally be free. She then goes on her computer and checks his personal belongings and gets his cap. And when she looks inside, she finds the memory card. And that's where the movie ends, boys and girls. How is David 80 years old and Dr. Livy is still in her mid 30s? What happened exactly? I highly recommend you guys watch this movie. It was really awesome and I enjoyed watching it for you guys. Make sure to like my video, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel. I love you guys so much. Ciao.